Well, today I'm doing a one-to-one -one workshop for a client and this tree, which is a Japanese five needle pine or the Japanese white pine, is very interesting and hence I wanted to show it uh, as a YouTube. Now what I have here, this tree is interesting from several points. First of all, it's been grown in moss and the owner told me that a few years ago, he was given this tree, I think 35 years ago or? 34. 34 years ago, I actually remember the time. And I believe it originated from us long ago because I've been here 37 years, so that would be right. We first started importing in 2000, not 2000, 1986, 87, we started importing. And we used to import these by the hundred, you know, 100, 200, 500 at a time. And the original pot, if I can have a look at it, yes. was the blue pot. And this blue pot is the typical type of Japanese pot these pines came in. So with a pot this size, the tree could be only about this high, no more than say 25, 30 centimeter high. Look at it now. It's at least 60 centimeters. So in 34 years, it's grown that big. But although it's in very good shape, the owner told me that a few years ago, this tree started going downhill. So he did the Peter Chan moss trick. So if you hold him close, you can see the sphagnum moss, which has been used and growing in a tray. Look at the mycelium in the moss, beautiful stuff. And it's growing so healthily, so it's picked up using the Peter Chan moss tree. I also want to show you a couple of other interesting features which um, our customer has done. If you come close, he's used cable ties to pull the branches down. So rather than use um, wire ties or guy wires, he's used cable ties to tie it down like a chain. So this is very ingenious. And this is something you might even like to try. But what I need to do is to give more definition to the branches. Some of the branches are springing up. So we'll wire them down and make the pads more obvious and visible and give it a generally good tidy up and more definition of all the pads. So that is what we are going to do. Not only that, to just show you how keen my friend Dave is. He has one of the original copies of Bonsai Masterclass. And these books, three years ago during lockdown, were being sold for two to three hundred pounds sterling. But we have the new version. Yeah, no. It's just come on. <laughs> so you're one of the lucky ones who has the original book, Bonsai Masterclass. So we are set about doing this. So what I will do, your cable ties have done the work, so we will take them off and then we will set about wiring this. All right? I'll just say something about how these pines are grown. Most of the Japanese white pines from Japan are grown on a black pine rootstock. So the graft is somewhere here. You can see the difference in the bark. So uh, this is a pine on black pine stock. And now that these little twigs have died, we can take these off. We don't need them. They're not big enough to make gin features. So we take these off. There's very little dieback, surprisingly. So it just shows that the tree generally is in good health. So the S shape we can't change, but we can change the pads. So the pads are going to be flattened more. Rather than letting them spring up, we're going to flatten them much more. So let's take a before picture and then after picture, you'll see the transformation. Yeah. So I'm going to wire these down. But because they're fairly thick branches, I'm using four and a half mil wire. That may not even be enough. A double coil might not even be enough. So I'm going to aid it by splitting the branch. So branch splitting literally means taking it through the branch like that. It won't kill the tree, I can assure you. In fact, it may even give it more character because when the scar heals, it'll make the whole branch look gnarled. 
so it will really add character to the tree so that would help a little bit Okay, that should be enough. We've got so far, we've put a double coil of four millimeter wire to give these pads more definition. But while I was looking at this tree, the original tree was only this high, but this tree has just grown over the last 34 years or 36 years, and it's become very leggy. I'm not entirely happy with it. You know, if I wanted to make a literati, I would cut everything out. I'd just keep the top and make a literati. The movement here is very nice. And if you come close to look at this feature here, that like a little shari there is very interesting. So there's a lot of movement here. So this is interesting. What I was thinking, and I was thinking aloud, and my uh, student is here with me. I suggested to him, let us do something radical. And before I could say anything, he said, I had thought of cutting the top off. Now, how great is that? It shows that great minds think alike. And he, from watching my YouTube videos, had even done the Peter Chan bag trick. And with the bag trick, he had explored the possibility himself of removing the entire top. Let me show it to you. So this is what he was thinking, removing the top and making it a shorter tree, like a semi-cascade, like so. So you can imagine the top disappear and we can tilt it like this and then bring this thing back. So we get a more compact tree without this leggy bit. So we will, with his kind permission, as we say, bite the bullet and work towards that. I may keep it as a gin for a while to see what the gin looks like, but once we decide, there's no going back. So, we only live once. Yeah, that's wrong. We only live once. <laughs> so let's go for it. Okay? I don't know whether he wants the pleasure of cutting it or not. Oh. You want to have the pleasure of cutting go, this? Go on, I will, yeah. I do it. Go on. Okay, all that 34 years of growth. There you go. There's no going back. <laughs> We've reduced the height of the tree. <laughs> I can see your heart jumping, <laughs> palpitating. <laughs> and we're going to make this a dense tree. And it's going to be like that. I think you won't regret it. Because if you had thought of doing it, but didn't have the courage to do it, we will proceed to do it. So the next stage is going to create a head and then we will see where it goes from there. All right. So I'll just show you where we've got to. We keep wiring, we're just wiring the pads. So the pads are flat. So we've wired the pad flat. Now, before I do anything with this, I'll just take the bark off because I'm going to use it for an anchor to put some guy wire. 
So we use all sorts of devices to get the bark off. You see, this is a special type of Japanese gin pliers called the duck bill. You see, it just rips the bark off. You can use all sorts of tools, pliers, or whatever. Some people even prefer to use this humble box cutter. When the bark is live, it comes off very easily. We will keep it up to there. We won't go further than that. The ultimate length of this gin, we will decide at a later stage. We're not going to rush it because let the design evolve. And then you can use all sorts of dremels and other carving tools to refine it. I want this tighter here, but because it won't bend anymore, I may have to tie it to the driftwood here. Just forming on the detail, you can see the wiring. I want to bring the head closer in and no amount of thick wire is going to do it effectively so I'm just doing a guy wire like this. And hopefully this will have brought it in much tighter.
can wash some more of these down like that. So this is the angle of planting of the tree. So if you come from here, you can see the frontal view. Uh, and then the gin is probably, if you feel they're a bit too long, I think it, I feel it's a bit long. In fact, this movement is quite nice going that way. So I will probably keep it like that. Let me just shorten this driftwood a little bit. Also, the top gins could also be shortened a bit. a little more and then you can refine it with all sorts of carving tools so this movement and that movement is all right so we're going to plant it at this angle eventually so it should be quite nice so one final shot of the tree we can decide on how long to keep the gin. I mean, how long the gin should be. It may not need to be that tall, but it's quite a nice feature, don't you think? Yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah. 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 It gives character. And we have a nice semi-cascade. And come the spring in February, Dave will bring it back to the nursery and I'll help to pot it in a semi-cascade pot. And there we have a formal upright, no, informal upright tree turned into a semi-cascade. One of the side branches has become the head and the other side branches become the cascading part. So I hope you are happy with it. Yeah, and uh, thank you for letting me video this because this has been a very exciting project. So the gins have to be refined. So that's another one-to-one -one class for my client here. So we've had a lovely time.